Thank you. So Grafana 11 is looking pretty cool, no? I really like the new uh, Metrics Explore feature. Now, I have the not so easy task of giving the talk right after the deep dive, with you all probably already dreaming about what you can build with the new Grafana. Luckily, I have a bit of an unusual topic for Grafana. Grafana is a lot about fancy technology, tracing for microservices or moon landings. I have a bit more down-to-earth topic, making food, and how we make it better using Grafana. To introduce, I think we're not quite there yet on the technical side. <laughs> I'll do it an hour like this. <laughs> cool. Thank you. So to introduce you to the, uh, to the area of food processing, I picked the example of coffee. After all, this is a tech conference, so I think most of you are aware of coffee, some maybe a little bit too well. well a food process starts with a natural input material, in this case, the, uh, the coffee fruit, and we can char characterize certain properties of it, like the, the redness, the color, or its water content. Thank you. Then in the next step, we apply processing to it with parameters like um, roasting duration and roasting temperature. And in the end, we get the final product, which we can characterize with like the acidity or the crema, the consistency of the crema. Now, the challenge in food processing is to find the parameters that lead to the desired properties in your final product while having to deal with variations in the input material from harvest to harvest. Now, I'm not in the coffee business. I work for Planted. We make plant-based meat with amazing taste and texture. And I think plant-based meat is a very interesting industry to be in right now. Because when it comes to their food habits, reducing meat consumption is top of mind for a lot of cons uh, consumers out there. And there are various motivations for that. Sustainability, climate change, personal health, and of course, animal welfare. Now, naturally, this leads to a market with a lot of companies out there trying to help these consumers to make that transition. So we are in a quite young still and booming industry with so many players, so the, the rate of new co uh, products coming to market is quite cool, quite good. And so plant-based meat today is much better than it was three years ago, and it's still improving at a great rate. What sets planted apart in this market is that we achieve our taste and texture without the use of artificial ingredients. Instead, we rely on science and technology like fermentation and extrusion to give these plant-based proteins the texture we want. So we are a technology leader in the space, and of course, we want to stay one. So what does that mean for us? We have to be able to bring new products to the market. And bringing products to the market requires two things. Well, first of all, you need a good idea in the lab. But then, and this is often overlooked, you also need the ability to bring that idea to market, to hit the volumes that you, uh, that you need to be nationwide in stores, or even internationally. What you see here on this screen, or in these pictures, is essentially the same machine twice. It's an extruder. On the left, it's a bit more the, the lab scale. And on the right, it's the, essentially the, the, the left half of the, of the, uh, of the room. So, how do we go from left to right? That's the question I want to talk about with you and how we make it faster. Well, now I'm going to ask a question that every software engineer loves. How hard can it be? In our case, just get a bigger machine. Well, it's not that easy. Let's go back to my coffee example from the start. Let's say you were working in your kitchen. You found a new way to make coffee, grind it in a nice way, it tastes really good, and you want to delight the world and bring it to scale. Well, in your kitchen you had this machine, and now in your factory you suddenly stand in front of that monster. So the parameters you had at the small scale are not necessarily going to translate well to the bigger scale. And just in general, it's a very complicated problem. You might have 30, 40 parameters on that machine with a lot of interdependencies, and the subspace of this parameter room in which you get good quality is quite small. So how do people find the correct process parameters to achieve great quality? It's good old trial and error. To take the coffee example once more, 
let's say you are a barista at home, you got yourself a coffee machine, you set it up, you make your first coffee, tastes awful. Then you change one of the parameters, let's say water temperature. Another coffee is still bad. You change another parameter, the grind size, and so on. And after a while, you have a great coffee. But your hands are also shaking because you just had 10 shots of espresso. The next time you, you change something on your setup, like you get a new coffee bean supplier, you might remember something from the last time. You remember how some parameters affect the output, so you get to the good coffee in only five shots. And that is essentially what is happening at an industrial scale, just with a few more parameters. Now, we were asked, OK, how can we make this, this ramp up process quicker? Because we are going to th go through it a lot with each new product we bring to market. And we thought, or we, we think there are a lot of um, um, parallels between the software world and the manufacturing world. Because when you look at it, what you do when you set up a production is you design a system, you think it's going to work, you put it into production, and then in some case, uh, cases, it's not quite working, and suddenly you have to fix it while there's a bunch of people standing behind you watching impatiently over your shoulder. If you have ever had to fix a bug in production, I think you know the situation. And if you have to fix bugs in production, what you want is observability. You need to know what's going on. And it's the same thing in manufacturing, we think. So what's the state? Yeah, faster debugging. So what's the state of observability in manufacturing? To answer that question, we first need to look at the difference between OT and IT. I think you're all aware of IT. OT means operational technology, and it's all the, the compute that is necessary to run physical processes, so the controllers on the machines. And these two industries have been moving at different speeds. In OT, the mantra is never change a running system. And in IT, some of you are deploying uh, multiple times per day. The other thing is, in the IT sector, there has been a huge investment into tools uh, to make pr developers more productive over the last 25 years. And this is starting to show. In OT, the analytics capabilities are very limited. So what people do is they get the data on a thumb drive, they put it into Excel, they analyze it there, and then you have Excels everywhere. And it's, yeah, you know the situation. Well, while in the IT sector, we have really great tools. So we decided, OK, we need to get our data out of this OT world so we have access to all the innovation that has been happening in the IT sector. And that's what we did. The first thing we did is we, uh, we built dashboards for our um, process engineers where they can now dynamically analyze um, the, the signals from the machines to do cause and effect analysis. And these dashboards are growing and they are, they are huge, a bit too big <laughs> for my taste. But uh, the process engineers really like them. Then we took it a step further because when you think about a ramp up, a great metric in a ramp up is repeatability. You run your process today, you run it again tomorrow, and you want to have it behave similarly. If you achieve that, then you have a stable process. To, to visualize this, it's great to, to plot these different production runs over each other. Unfortunately, that's a bit difficult with the standard Grafana, because Grafana works well for streaming data, where you have absolute time on the x-axis. In a batch process, you're not interested in absolute time, you're interested in relative time, so how many hours since the start of the process. Luckily, with the plug-in system and some great open source uh, work from Volkov Labs, we were able to do that using the eCharts plugin. I just noticed, I think this right here is the variable plugin from Volkov, so that's also from the, them, uh, so thanks for that. Good. Um, Planted is a bit unusual in the food space because we have science, engineering, and production in one house. A lot of companies try to outsource production. But we think it's great for innovation to have this all in, in the same building so we have easy communication. But this setup will only pay off if the communication actually takes place. 
And to facilitate it, it's important that data can flow between these different teams. And Grafana is a great means to, to make this exchange happen, to get production data back to science or engineering. So now we've talked a bit about how we use Grafana for our engineers. But a ramp up is not a pure engineering challenge. There are other parts of the company involved as well. Sales needs to know how it's going, how are the quantities, so they can talk to their customers who are waiting for the product. Um, management needs to know how it's going so they, so they can take decisions. So basically, they all come to the, uh, uh, to the production team with, with one question, how is it going? Well, the traditional way of answering this is somebody gets out an Excel, they copy-paste a bunch of data together, then they send an email, and there's a lot of control C, control V magic involved, and it's not that great because data is outdated the minute you send that email, and nobody likes to do it. With Grafana, it is quite easy to bring disparate data sources together so you can share that, um, that dashboard. People have access to, to live data, and it saves a bit of time on the reporting part, but what I think is more important is that it improves decision-making because people have easier and better access to data. And that's what we're building right now. Now, the third challenge during a ramp-up, it's not really a challenge, it's actually something nice, is as you go along, you notice things that you can improve. You, you notice potential. Well, the fastest way to realize this potential is if we can do it in-house, because if you rely on suppliers, you have to wait for um, yeah, a few weeks for their lead time, sometimes months. So we try to do it in-house in as much as possible. An example for that is adding sensing. So we noticed, for example, that in one process, it was interesting to, to understand what's going on, to have pictures of it. What we did is we hooked out a camera there, and we have a button in the dashboard, and people can click that button, then a picture is taken, and we can already connect it with the sensor data at that point in time, right out of Grafana. The next thing is we have a bunch of machines that allow remote control, but they don't come with a UI to send these commands. So we thought, okay, where do we put now this, this, this command, uh, this option to send the commands? Well, our users are already inside of Grafana to analyze the data, so it makes sense that from that very point they can act then on that data, so that it's nicely integrated from a single application. The next use case is we have machines where you can dynamically position the sensors. The unfortunate part is that the machine does not come with a way to track where these sensors were when. The reason behind that is that a lot of manufacturers live, um, let's say, a bit in the moment when it comes to data. They want the operator to know in that moment what is happening, but the data from yesterday or the week before, they don't care really anymore. But for us, as we are trying to push these processes to the limit, we really want to understand what's going on, so we need to track that data. So what we did is we built an operator dashboard for that machine in Grafana, And our operators can use this. It's very simple for them. They decide, ah, okay, let's put here, put a sensor in that one. Then we have some business logic to do a bit of shuffling that we do. And we have the, the data annotation taken care of. And the operator can, from inside Grafana, see how is the process going. Uh, our process engineers can analyze how we can maybe improve it and so on. Now we are unloading, yeah, I think you get the idea. Well, now if you go a bit further in the production life cycle, even when you are producing, let's say, normal operation, there will still be issues. It's like a software system, you will still occasionally have the incident. And then the only question is, how fast do you detect that you have an incident, and how fast and reliably can you resolve it? Well, we are already ingesting all that data, 10 million measurements per day, 
and we can run analysis on top of it and detect that we have an issue. But we don't stop there. When we detect the issue, we notify the operator, and we also send them instructions on how to act on it. So they see here, run through these five steps to resolve it. And this enables us to have standardization across operators, because they all get the same steps. They don't have to like, come up with ways to fix it. They can just go with, the, with it. Now, some of you might be thinking, isn't this pushing Grafana a bit? We are quite far away from the, from the core, from the normal use case of monitoring. And I agree with that. Normally, you should use a, a tool in the way it is intended to be used. But I think in our case, we have a lot of benefits from it. We are still a fairly small company, and the, the, the data team is small, so we need to keep our tech stack small and manageable. But what is even more important is from the perspective of the users, we don't want to have for them 10 applications they have to log in. We will try to keep it that they can do a lot from a single application. And I think we can do this in a robust way in Grafana, thanks to its plugin system. So to summarize this a bit, at the beginning we talked about the, the market situation, the need to, to innovate, to stay a technology leader. Told you that uh, we believe that having these smart factories where we can take data-driven decisions enables us to take faster and better decisions so we can reliably outrun the competition in the long term. And Grafana plays an important role in that. And I think what I tried to show with this, this uh, talk is that Grafana is not just a monitoring tool for software. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond software to something like food making, and it goes beyond monitoring. Um, you can control machines through Grafana. You can annotate data. Now, I hope you had a great lunch. Otherwise, you might get hungry now, but of course, I wanted to show you what's the result of all that work. It's our latest product, the steak. Look at that juiciness. <laughs> and the fibers. Uh. Good. <laughs> now, the, the most important slide. Um, it's great to work with people who are not from the software industry, because for them, something like Grafana is really something new and magical. Like we have our food science team, uh, someone from the IT, they had a new process and it was their baby, and they were really excited about Grafana because the, the process runs during the night. They were like, now I can watch what's going on during the night. I won't be able to sleep. And of course, Big thanks to my team, the Smart Factory team, Marco, Nadja, and Georgia. They are also here in the audience. Um, they made this all possible. <laughs>